Hello to all you Linux fans. Today what we're going to do is get a Linux server installed on a virtual machine using VirtualBox. And just to note that the default Ubuntu server will come as a command line interface. If you want the GUI version, we'll do that in the next video. I'll leave a link in the description below. So first thing that you need to do is download the actual ISO. So if you head over to ubuntu.com, download slash server, you'll go into this tab here and then you can just click on download Ubuntu server, the, the green box here. There is a potentially easier or better option, which is option two instant ubuntu vms we're not going to cover that in the video today but that's something worth exploring if you're more familiar with the infrastructure we're going to go ahead with option one which is a manual server installation so while that's done downloading for you feel free to pause the video but we're going to go and set up the virtual machine instance in virtualbox now i've got this ready so i'll talk you through what it consists of here's the details of it now I've gone over the minimum requirements because I physically have sufficient resources available. But if I talk you through, so the name, just give your server a relevant name suited to your needs. I've called mine Ubuntu server. It will pre-select the other options so you don't need to fill this in. Um, it will just do that for you. So I've kept the shared clipboard and drag and drop disabled. Uh, don't need any descriptions for this one or disk encryption. The system, now on the base memory, the minimum requirement is one gig. I've gone for four gigs just to make it a bit more snappy. We can actually uncheck floppy because we don't need that. All the other settings are fine. For processor, you should get away with one gig processor. I'm gonna just crank that. I've just cranked it up to two because in certain occasions there uh, are issues with using one CPU. So go for two if you can. Acceleration, leave on the default settings. Display will we'll sort out the default Ubuntu server installation is actually CLI, it's a command line interface, so this won't be too relevant. The storage, you wanna attach your ISO. Once you've got it downloaded, you wanna attach your ISO uh, image to the controller IDE. So you can see I've attached mine here. If you didn't have that set up already, you would just click this uh, disk icon and then find wherever you've downloaded the ISO image and select it that way. Audio, we don't need, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Network, what I wanna do is in my particular situation, depending on in your setup, this is gonna vary, but I want mine to internal network only. Now, we, we can't go through different variations of network infrastructure here, but basically, as long as this server has access to the internet, uh, it needs to obtain and do updates. And in my case, I want it to connect to an Active Directory environment. So it needs to be connected to that network adapter. So in my setup, the way that I'm going to achieve both of those is using the internal network adapter. Yours is going to vary, but try and achieve as a minimum the goal of it having internet access. Obviously, Active Directory compatibility is going to vary on your needs. Proceed as you see fit. The other options not necessary to go through, so click OK. Now what we can do, we are ready to start. So we'll click start and that should start the Ubuntu server installation. And I'll talk you through exactly what we need to do. So at this stage, just press enter. And you just need to give it a little bit of time to do its thing, but believe the next prompt is gonna ask us what language we wanna proceed in. So keep an eye out for that stage. Brilliant. So we are now ready to instruct it for the next step. So for me, it's going to be English. So just press enter. Now there is an installer update available. I don't really see much value in that in this particular scenario. So we'll continue without updating. Press enter. Keyboard layout. Mine is fine as the default. So in fact, I'm just going to change mine to English UK. And we'll continue on from there. Right, we want the Ubuntu server option, so default is fine, so we'll carry on. Now at this stage you want to check that it's obtained an IP address, assuming that you've set up DHCP somewhere. Mine is configured through an Active Directory environment, so in this case that all appears fine for me. That has obtained a valid IP address in the IP pool that I've set, so I'm going to click done on that one. If you're using a proxy, then configure that here. I'm not, so I'll click done. Mirror address, so this is where the updates will come from. 
by default it will go based on your location and just select the nearest one i'm happy with that so click done now here it wants to use the entire disk as a default uh, to do the installation as you can see that's the 25 gig that we allocated for it in the virtual disk environment that's fine this can only see the virtual disk that you set up at the beginning in virtual box so that's fine it's not physical so we're happy with that we'll click continue go down and click continue right so now we've got a summary so take a moment just to double check everything it's confirming how it's gonna set up and allocate that virtual disk that you've set it so for me i'm happy with that so we'll click done now in this case this is a valid warning if this was on a physical machine but as it's a virtual disk this can only see what you've allocated for it in the first place so we're safe to continue now set up a username server name etc so i'll do that here and i'm going to just put the server name as ubuntu server we'll also just um, select a password as well and you'll just confirm that arrow down to done uh, open ssh server is useful on server environments so we'll select that so you just press uh, spacebar to select it you don't have an ssh identity to import so we'll carry on click done these are other popular software or snaps as it's called in server environments um for this case we don't need any of that scroll down to done press enter and now it will be installing the system now assuming all goes well it'll just continue until the point it needs you to reboot the machine now when all goes well you'll be ready to reboot the machine so you just have to wait a few minutes i think roughly five minutes depending on the speed of your machine and you should be ready to reboot this server right so when your machine is done we can select reboot now so scroll down press enter cool so what we need to do here is because if you've ever installed it physically okay so we've got a failed message but don't worry this is perfectly normal basically basically what's happened is the iso is still in the machine hypothetically because it's a virtual machine so what you need to do is just head over to your virtual machine let's check that it's been unmounted there we go so the optical drive is now empty so virtualbox has done that automatically so we can go back here and just press enter it will reboot the machine and we're almost done so we'll just wait for that to load up Okay, once you've reached the second OK sign, you can just press enter and be prompted for a login. So we can just put our username that we created and then the password that we set. And we are now logged in as the username on the Ubuntu server. That's your server on Ubuntu all set up and ready. And we can just check hostname as well. It says it was the Ubuntu server, which is in the, the details there anyway. So that's everything done. Server is set up. As I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, the Ubuntu server by default is CLI, so command line interface. If you want a GUI version, keep an eye out for the next video and I'll show you how to carry on from this sort of stage and get that all set up on a GUI interface. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Bye for now.